In this video, we're going to look at a concrete example of Gram Schmidt, where I've given you three specific vectors, x1, x2, x3, and what our goal is, is to find three orthogonal vectors, a v1, a v2, and a v3, that has the property not just of being an orthogonal, but an orthogonal basis for this span of x1, x2, x3. As in, if my x1, x2, x3 are going to be a basis for some subspace w that I haven't changed the subspace, I still have a basis, it's just an orthogonal one now. Alright, so how did the process work? First step, I need to figure out what my v1 is, and my v1, that's the easy one, it's just going to be the exact same thing as the x1, and I will copy it down, 1, 2, minus 2. Wonderful. All right, so that was fair enough. Now I want to look at the V2. And this had a somewhat complicated formula. It was going to be the X2, and I subtract off the projection onto the X1. In other words, I took the, the X2, and I projected it onto the V1, rather, divided by the V1, dotted with the V1, all in the V1 direction. So that's our process. Let's do the computation. So the x2 here is 1, 0, minus 4. Then I'm taking the projection, and you can have a choice of whether you choose to represent these vectors vertically or, or horizontally. It doesn't really matter. So, so often when I have fractions, I, I prefer to write my vectors horizontally. So x2 dot v1 is 1, 0, minus 4, dotted with, and then v1, 1, 2, minus 2. And then I'm dividing all of this by v1 dotted with v1. So 1, 2, minus 2 dotted with 1, 2, minus 2. And then that's a big coefficient. And all of it, and I'll, I'll write it again vertically here, is going to be in the v1, 1, 2, minus 2. All right, so let's do these dot products. We are going to have 1, 0, minus 4. And then I'm subtracting off on the top, it is going to be a 1 plus a 0 plus 2 minus is a positive plus an 8, so a 9 on the top. And then 1 plus 4 plus 4 is another 9 on the bottom. So that's 9 over 9, which is convenient. That's just going to be a 1. You can sort of ignore that entirely. And so it's going to be a 1 minus 1 is a 0. A 0 minus 2 is a minus 2. And a minus 4 minus a minus 2 is going to be a minus 2. All right, wonderful. Next up, I have to come here and let's just change colors for some variety. Let's go to the V3 now. This is going to be the same thing as X3 minus, and then I do the projections onto both the V1 and the V2. So I have to take X3, let's do V1 first, over V1 dotted with V1, and then subtract off the X3 dotted with the second one, the V2. And so I divide out by v2 dotted with v2. And the first of these is a coefficient in the v1 direction, and the second of these is a coefficient in the v2 direction. All right, so we have quite a bit of data to fill in. I guess we actually need to have our original vectors written down here, otherwise we'll never have a hope. x3 is right over there, so 5, 2, 0. All right, so now let's do this dot product, the x3 dot the v1. So that's comparing those two. And it looks like it's going to be 5 and 4 is 9 on the top. So that's going to be a 9. v1 dot v1, we already did that. That was right over here. So that was another 9. Don't have to do anything there. Wonderful. It works out nicely again. And v1 is a 1, 2, minus 2. Lovely. Now I want to do x3 dotted with v2. So if I'm looking at x3 dot v2, there's my x3, there's my v2 here, so it's those two that I'm doing the dot product. Again, I'm going to do it in my head. I've got a 0, then I've got a minus 4, and then another 0, so it looks like it's going to be a minus 4 here. So this is going to be a minus 4. And then I want to look at v2 dot v2, so I have to look at this. This is going to be a plus 8. So I'm going to put it there, plus 8, and then all in the v2 direction, so 0, minus 2, minus 2. 
So mainly just a, a good bunch of computations, but now I can run this out a little bit easier. So five, two, zero, minus one, two, minus two. And then a minus of minus is a plus. Four over eight is a half. There's only twos here. So I'm going to say that this is plus zero minus one minus one, where I've divided out by the twos here. And then final step, I can go and add these up. Five minus one plus zero is four. Two minus two is zero, plus a minus one is minus one. Zero minus minus is plus two. So plus two minus one is one. And that gives me my third answer. So then if I look collectively at what it is that I've computed here, I'm going to have these three different answers. I've got the V3 down here, that's this value. I've got my V2 right here, that's my V2. And I have my V1 up here. So those three vectors together are a orthogonal basis. They will always be orthogonal and they will always be a basis for the span of the original three vectors, the x1, the x2, and the x3.